Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. On this episode, we're going to work on my WPL C24 rock crawler. As you can see, the four link is being updated in a different episode. And therefore, I have my front and my rear axles laying about. We're going to take these parts here, as well as these parts for the front axle and these drive shafts, and throw them all in this general vicinity. Unfortunately, there is no instruction manual. So we are going to rely on my engineeringness to get this all put together. What could go wrong? I'm going to start with the rear axle since it's less complicated and I'll tear it down first and be right back. The diff is taken apart and just note which screws go where. These slightly shorter ones are what hold the four link mount here onto the diff. I won't be using this because I have a metal one coming for the upgraded four link. So we'll put that away. But here's the main differential anyway and we'll take the top off. There we go. And I don't believe that we're going to use any of this. Also, a side note, the WPL six-wheel drive truck already has a brass gear in the front differential. The rear is still plastic, but the front one is, in fact, brass. The kit that I ordered, and uh, I wish I could tell you exactly which one I ordered, but there are quite a few of the exact same ones. Some of these parts came from Alibaba, some eBay, some Banggood. So I'm sorry, I just don't know where to recommend to get them. But it did come with two axle shafts, a longer one and a shorter one. And you have this output drive that will go right there and there's a little flat on it. So we'll slip that in place. I'm gonna use some thread lock and install the very, very tiny M3 set screw in here and stack up the bearings and the gears from this end. The main shaft is assembled and I have the outer out drives thread locked in place and snugged up. On the inside, I've applied thread lock, but I haven't tightened it because I want to make sure that the, the main gear sits directly in the center. Wow, that's actually really nice feeling. Okay, and now we can tighten it up. That was uneventful. I'm surprised that I had no issues. That looks really good. I'm gonna put the rear cover back on and then we're gonna apply a very healthy application of anti-wear grease. We are going to have to remove the pinion and the drive shaft and I do have a replacement drive shaft here. This is the second style I've installed. So this will not fit the shaft that is left over here because this one has been knurled and therefore the diameter has been increased. So you're gonna to have to slowly grind down the outer diameter. I am curious to see if the brass one will fit the drive shaft. And it does. So I, I honestly would have lost a bet there. To get this off, I've heard people just melting it, but I'm gonna take some pliers and just kind of crack it and remove it. Unfortunately, it's pressed on so tight that it won't pull off. At least for me, it won't. There we go. And there are two bearings. Wow, that's actually really short on this one. Two bushings. And now we can rebuild it. Bearing on the inside. And then we'll put the other bearing here on the outside. Next, I'm gonna hold this in place and install the drive shaft. The reason why I'm doing this now as opposed to installing it while it's on the diff is I want to make sure that this has adequate freedom. It may be possible to over install to push the drive shaft on too deep and this will also allow me to see how much play there is. Here we've got about a millimeter and I want to get rid of that by adding some shims. Unfortunately the shims don't come in the kit. I just happen to have a rather large helping of three millimeter diameter shims. So these drive shafts have been installed. There are there's a set screw on both sides of this drive shaft. One side of it does sit on a flat. I will say that although the scale realism of these axles is simply beautiful, I have zero faith that they're gonna stay on. These are M2 set screws, and I don't know, I just don't feel good about them. The other version that I've installed, it, they're, they're quite ugly, but they're very overbuilt, and I think you're going to have a lot better luck with those. I'm going to use this Tamiya ceramic grease. I was going to use some anti-wear grease, but I think the ceramic stuff's going to work awesome. Please note that brass is also self-lubricating, but that doesn't mean it won't do without some, some grease in here as well. Okay, so put a good helping of it. Close your case up. And there we have it. So this is all, all assembled. Feels okay. I'm feeling a little bit of inconsistency, but again, I think this whole set was around $9, so I'm not expecting perfection. Let's take a look at the front one now. The front end is going to be a little more complicated because the front end obviously does the steering. This means we have new hubs. We've also got the stub axle. We have a dog bone uh, interface, which is going to allow the vehicle to turn. We have the ring gear, and we have the pinion on the shaft. 
and the main axle. So like before, let's tear this down. So a little more complexity to this axle, but we'll start like before. I'll put one end onto the axle and secure it using a set screw. All right, so the dog bone end and the bearings, the ring gear and the axle are all installed. Next, we gotta focus on the hubs. The hub requires one larger bearing on the inside and one on the outside at which point we'll have to slot our axle straight in so that the hex drive is pointed out, just like that. And now we can install the hub in the axle. As you can see, I reassembled the axle in the exact same way as the previous one, and I also placed the hub where it's supposed to go. The hub slides in very easily, but you're also going to put this brass spacer on top since we are using the standard axle. You'll then take a M3 Phillips screw You'll then take a machine screw and I put a little dab of thread lock on it and drop it straight in here. Okay, this is aluminum, so don't over torque it. Just a little dab of thread lock is all you need as well. We'll do that to the bottom. I'll put this spacer in here as well. So there goes the spacer. One more screw with thread lock. And there you go. It's actually, that feels really nice. There's no play, there's no slop. You have some axial play here, but that's because the tire's not on yet. Cool. And now the other side. For this next bit, we're going to use the steering arm, put this spacer straight through it, and use one of these incredibly long machine threaded screws and thread it straight on in. Eventually, it'll come to a stop. Be really careful with these. I have zero faith that these threads are gonna hold up to any torquing at all. And on the top, I'm gonna to just place it here temporarily. We're gonna slide this bushing here. And when we reassemble everything, we're going to use this connector just like that. So this steering link will go right there, and that'll hold it all in place. I am planning on replacing these with some better steering links. For the time being, we'll just drop that on top and use a screw that is supplied with the kit, or excuse me, a nut that is supplied with the kit to hold it all together. Please note that I did show this spacer upside down. It should be like this. And when I put the nut on it, I really don't feel like we're getting enough engagement. I may sand this down about a millimeter so that I do have some more thread engagement. We'll put the other brass spacer on this side and screw it down. I have to say that this axle upgrade went way too easy. I'm really surprised that I didn't run into any problems because I've run into a number of problems in other elements of this car's Build. But this is a good thing. The other upgrades that I plan on doing may not be necessary, but full bearings on front and rear axles, as well as better gears, uh, I simply don't see as a negative. Well, folks, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see a lot more on this build. In fact, I've just installed full lighting on this pickup. So we have headlights, side markers, and taillights. So these side markers are operational and we've made some rear ones, at least some holes for them right now and we're getting fully upgraded taillights. I don't have part numbers or recommendations on where to get these. I bought them all over the usual suspects like eBay, Banggood, Alibaba, and etc. Just remember with a lot of these parts, there may be some fit and finish issues, and I will cover the ones that I come across to the best of my ability. Anyway, folks, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.